All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be installing the PG-16 cable glands for the reverse cable and to operate the uh, reverse bucket. So I was able to get the reverse cable and mechanism out of the jet ski. And uh, the jet ski has a bronze, I believe it's bronze cable gland, but due to the composition of the boat being aluminum, I'm using a, uh, a plastic cable gland so that I don't have galvanic corrosion and the aluminum in the boat doesn't start corroding and give way instead of the bronze. So I'm just gonna use a, a butt ton of Sycamarine adhesive around this too so that it doesn't go anywhere. But these are IP68 rated, so they're, they're certainly waterproof. They come with a little gasket on the inside of them. And it's uh, as you cinch this down, it's tapered. So it actually crushes this rubber piece down onto the surface that it's supposed to go around. I was able to pick all of these up on Amazon for like 12 bucks. There's a, a huge bag of them or set of bags of them. So there's PG 16s, 14s, 12s, 10s, 8s and 6s, I think. So uh, a good variety of them. But uh, an explanation about how this is going to work is let me undo this here. I'm not left handed and I'm using just my left hand. I'm gonna learn to be ambidextrous with all this hand filming stuff. So that goes over that like so, and then this will end up coming on here. But before that happens, this slides up the way and then this is gonna cinch itself to the, uh, to the transom. And then on there, there's a little lock that goes over here that keeps the cable from shifting up. And then this can go on like so. And then the end, which is tapered on the inside there, as you can see, will end up going on like so. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to trim all this up because it, it doesn't seem to be fitting perfectly. But once it goes on like that, those two go together and then you uh, tighten them on and uh, there's your cable gland. So. I'm gonna get to installing this right now. I just gotta drill a hole in the boat and uh, then figure out where I need this mount to go. So, all right, I'm gonna get started on that. And before I can be confident about cutting more holes in my boat, this is roughly 10 and a half inches deep from the transom where it's going to uh, connect, including this little uh, ball and socket. Uh, connector for this bucket. The little ball in right there. You can't really see it, but the little ball right there. So that's ten and a half inches, and I need to make sure that the uh, the ball and socket sticks ten and a half inches off of the transom. Or yep, so like right about there. So yeah, that's uh, that's almost exactly right. So uh, looks like it's ten and three quarter, but. And before I can do that, I have to move this muffler out of the way so I can actually get to a, the area that I'm gonna be putting this cable. So here is that. I stopped recording there for a bit because I was working with the Sycamarine epoxy and you can see that it's uh, now epoxied in. 
the uh, the plastic cable gland is totally watertight now and it has the little pinch fitting at the end there and uh it was a little bit sloppy with the sicka but that's uh, probably not a bad problem to have so it comes through and it goes up to the front here it's kind of just laying over for the time being but i'm gonna ride it along the side and then up the gunnel and then hopefully have like a little lever here that's uh not in the way of my hand but i'll figure that out and uh, you can see on the back here, it's epoxied in as well. If I can get that to uh, focus. And uh, turned out pretty good. This entire thing actually went without hitch, which is uh, strange. Because usually at least something doesn't go right. Knock on aluminum. But uh, yeah, and it fits up into the little ball up in there just fine. So uh, I'll show you how it actually actuates itself. The reverse bucket portion. Let me get all this stuff to focus correctly. All right, so I'm gonna go move that lever right there and that bucket should flip up and down. so simple, so satisfying. All right, so uh, the latter half of this video will more than likely be either me installing this or uh, installing the steering cable once that shows up from Minijet. So, all righty. Okay, all the goodies came in from Minijet. The, uh, the steering cable, he preloaded the ends with uh, the right size cable ends so that it just fits onto the jet pump or steering nozzle. Uh, the little scrunchie here that's gonna go on the end where it punches through the boat. And uh, it's real convenient not having to go do research for every little thing and just kind of hit him up and say, hey, do you have this thing? And he just sends all of the correct stuff. So it makes the process a little easier, but uh, yeah, asked for a couple of stickers and sent me like a plethora. Gonna have to sticker charge everything. All right, I'm gonna get this installed. All right, so I wanted to get it mocked up to kind of see exactly how this is all gonna go. And there's gonna be that little lock tab that goes in between that nut and the, uh, the exterior of the transom to, to lock that in place. But the little scrunchie goes on and there's a little rubber boot underneath this scrunchie that ends up needing to get cut off in order to get this scrunchie on. And uh, that's how it keeps it all watertight. And uh, yeah, so now that I have that all in place, it's essentially gonna work like so. A push pull, so as you push, it goes through and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, now I just gotta get all this disassembled, take this thing off and uh, go put it through the boat. So see, this is all some pretty high quality stuff here. All right, I'm gonna start on that now. I put the, uh, the lid over the engine cover just to kind of see what it would end up looking like. And uh, the whole setup is starting to look pretty clean. All right, and uh, Jamie said there were two options really and for uh, routing the steering cable. One was to kind of go down along the floor area and then circle back around, which would obviously be the shortest path, or to follow the gunnel routing, which would be going down the gunnel and then swooping left and going up to the steering box. I chose the, uh, I wanted the, the cable to be as short as possible. So less, you know, less cable, it does less moving, less friction, easier to turn kind of thing. So it's gonna go down the, the bottom and then circle back around and come up into the steering assembly or the steering helm. I'm gonna get this uh, piece of aluminum removed and start figuring out the routing for that so that I can figure out the depth for each, uh, each of the nuts. So here's that.
All right, there's the end of it right there. It's routed all along the bottom of the boat on the underside of the engine. It goes up towards that way. And then the thought process is it's gonna pop out down there and then circle around and then come into the helm, like so. Um, before I can do any of that, I need to get this reverse bucket off and jet nozzle uh, accessible easily because the cable is gonna poke through that hole right there. And uh, I need to actually be able to see what I'm doing and drill through the uh, transom and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna remove the uh, reverse bucket that I luckily just got fully installed. So get that done. All right, this is not the best way to use your drill bits, but I found the exact size drill bit that fits through this hole here. So I'm gonna use that tip right there to act as a location punch so that I can start with a small drill bit and then use a step bit to work my way up to the size because uh, using Thor's drill bit here isn't, uh, isn't gonna be the easiest thing to start out with. So let's start with doing this. to start and uh, I'll illustrate that like so. So it's made a little dimple in the metal so that I can uh, easily start my drill bit. Okay, I was able to just to pull the other spring off so that dropped the stomp grade down so that I can actually gain access to this. So. Give this thing a little mustard. All right, so now that my pilot hole has been drilled, I can go to the other side where I actually have some space to work and uh, get the rest of this drilled through here to 680 thousandths, which is the OD of this hole here. To illustrate the size comparison between the two uh, the two eyelets, that should do pretty well. The one on the right is the factory jet ski cable. The one on the left is the proper Teleflex eyelet. So, for the nozzle, I'm just gonna have to drill this out and then find a proper uh, nut and bolt that fits through here, and then uh, hopefully it should work. So this is essentially just to figure out if my uh, if my basic length that I have here is correct, or if I need to cut away some of that, cut away some of this plate because that's that's uh, barely threaded on there, just because it's just a little bit too short. So right now the whole purpose of this is to figure out if uh, this length is going to work, or if I'm going to have to stick that through a little bit further. And it's looking like it's pretty close, but this is only hanging on by a few threads. Oh, never mind, that's not just a few threads. All right, uh, disregard that, I should be good. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. There, there it is. I'm gonna finish this up now. All right, in order to get the proper spacing for that cable to punch through, I need to take about 
a quarter inch off of this plate here, which feels like a sin because it looks so pretty. But um, yeah, I'm using this, uh, this cutoff wheel to do it. I've been running my compressor consecutively for the last uh, probably 30 minutes. And uh, it's been going nonstop and it's rated at 90 uh, PSI at 4.5 static cubic feet per minute. But uh, I realized that I hadn't ever put a water separator on this thing and I've never drained the water in it in the last like three months that I've used it. So I'm gonna clean that now. So as I pulled this this uh, release valve here, the spring in this release valve decides to go back in at 60 PSI. So I didn't know that. I thought that this went back in when there was zero pressure, which now that I think about it, isn't logical. That's not how things work. Um, so after I pulled this, all the air went out, but that was a lie. It was really still at 60 PSI. So this is left-handed threads. So as I'm loosening it, I'm actually tightening it and nothing's working, so I'm getting confused. So I go the opposite way, which is tightening it, which is actually loosening it. So I uh, probably should have used common sense here, but while there's still 60 PSI in the tank, I couldn't get it to reseat and all this you know, rusty water is falling out, hence my hands. And uh, as, it, uh, as I fully undid it, this bolt came out at 60 PSI with all the air <laughs> in this thing and uh, Jesus, which was just ridiculous. So uh, yeah, pay attention to the thread orientation on these things. And uh, this O-ring is wasted out too, so they got me. Here it is. Yep, all right, now I have another job to do because just to do one thing, you gotta do six other things. So, all right, I'm gonna fix this and then get back to the job. All right, we have to make this joint fit onto the nozzle. And Chris is gonna do that. So uh, yeah, and I'm gonna work on getting this hole drilled to the right size and thread it. So there's that. Chris and I just made this happen. Mainly Chris. Mainly me. So anything that looks awful is hell. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the uh, the spatter there, that is the Sika Marine. It's probably blend that in a little better, but we had to notch the uh, mini jet adapter here because the depth of the uh, of the steering cable through here, there wasn't enough threads because there's only threads for an inch and a half, and the adapter plus this is an inch and a quarter, so you end up with an, a, a tiny amount of threads on each side if you don't use washers, but you have to use washers, so then you basically have no threads. So that's all together. So this goes like so. And I, uh, I gotta zip tie that scrunchie, but that's all together. Mine works too. 
Yeah, and Chris got the uh, Chris got the Heim joint drilled and tapped in there, and we notched it. It's pretty close. Some custom notch work. And while he's doing that, you can see that in there, you go back and forth. Why isn't this thing focusing? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it goes back and forth. All right. Well, we're gonna get that installed to the steering helm right there, right now. All right. So I am up in this thing. And I am regretting all of these bolts poking through right now as I lay down on them. Because it's kind of tight quarters, but this is gonna go in there like so. And then uh, connect to that. All right, I'm gonna get that done. All right, so uh, this is installed. That gets installed like so. You can see Chris is moving the wheel left to right, and that's how the mechanism works. And uh, basically, because I'm crammed down in here, uh, I really couldn't see back there. So Chris was the one who did all the validation to make sure that the center of the wheel was where the bucket was centered, just like so. All right, uh, I'll show you what the back looks like. Dude, that smells oh. good. I just put a bunch of water on this and these are other connected to this. That smells real good. All right, so uh, it's loaded up. I have an oar, I have my life jackets, I have some basic tools. Pretty much have all the things that the people on the mini jet boat Facebook group said to uh, have prior to my first run. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out and see how it performs. And hopefully it doesn't sink or uh, shoot me out the side of it or I don't know. Hopefully it just works. So some guys made mention that I should just dip it in the water, let it idle for five minutes, make sure that you know it doesn't immediately start taking on water. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how it does. And uh, next video will be it idling or not next video, but next clip. So, all right, here goes this. Okay, good.
Just a little bit of water was coming through uh, where I didn't properly seal the, the steering cable, so I got to fix that. But overall, this was a, a success. I can start building the bulkhead and the Okay, fuel I just got done riding it, and to be honest, I had no idea what to expect. I've only ever owned two jet skis, and those were for maybe two months at a time, and uh, never had a boat before. You know, my dad had boats and all that, but wasn't around them all that much, but did not expect it to be this fast. It, uh, supercharger screams. I thought that I might, <laughs> I might be able to discreetly ride this through the creeks of uh, the city I live in, but there is no way. Supercharger starts screaming, then bald eagles start screaming. It's just crazy. But yeah, it's, it's ready to go. I just have to build the uh, the bulkhead here and then uh, get a proper fuel cell. The seating position was perfect. Uh, so I just need to be able to scoot it forward and backward. And um, yeah, it's, it's gonna work great. And uh, once I build the bulkhead, I can build the fuel cell. Once the fuel cell is built, then I can build the lid and then uh, do all the finishing work and get it wrapped. And the fuel cell, I mentioned the volume in, in uh, videos past, but that's essentially what it's gonna look like. And down here is where it's gonna poke into the stringer. So it's gonna be, you know, 29.09 gallons with the dimensions that I sized up. So should be plenty. Uh, this thing rips. So, uh, all right, the next video is gonna be pulling all this shit out of here and uh, putting the bulkhead in. All right, until next time.